The number four team has arrived in Piscataway. Michigan State off to their best start since 2010, but that man is back for Rutgers star wide receiver Leontay Carew. The birthplace of college football, it should be a fantastic setting here tonight in Piscataway. BTN Football presented by the new Pioneer 1000 from Honda as we play our third and final game here on BTN. It's the fourth rank Michigan State Spartans at 5-0 taking on the 2-2 two two Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And with that, we welcome you to the broadcast booth. Good evening, everyone. Alongside Chuck Long, I'm Corey Probus. It's a blackout in the past that has worked well for Rutgers. How much of an impact can it have again tonight? Well, the blackout will be loud tonight. One of the best primetime venues in all of the Big Ten. It'll be nice and loud for those number four Michigan State Spartans coming to town. And Rutgers will need it because Michigan State is a good football team. It's a good football team and a lot of senior leaders, most notably their quarterback, Connor Cook. And in the past, maybe Michigan State's been conservative offensively can that change here tonight it can but Connor Cook is really leading this team in a great way this year what I like about him 10 touchdown passes to only one interception and one sack his offensive line and running backs are protecting him but he's getting rid of the ball he's making great decisions and they're winning games because of that so Connor Cook is ready and poised to make an impression here tonight in Piscataway meanwhile Back for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, one of the top wide receivers in all of college football. Leonte Carew is back, reinstated by the program on Wednesday, practice Thursday. What a difference he can make tonight for Chris Laviano. Oh, he can make a big difference. He averages 19 yards per catch in his career, over 25 yards per catch this year already. They're missing the big play in their offense, and Leonte Carew can provide that tonight. That, is the, that could be the difference for them, for them in their offense. Deontay Carew is back. Rutgers looking for a signature win this season coming off a of bye week 2-2 two and two on the year. Michigan State looking for win number six. Should be a lot of fun tonight here in Piscataway. Michigan State at 5-0. and oh, Rutgers 2-2. Two and two. More from New Jersey next here on BCN. The Scarlet Knight leading the charge here at High Point Solution Stadium. We are moments away from Rutgers and Michigan State. Chuck, take us through the Auto Owners Insurance Impact Players here tonight. Well, Impact Players for Rutgers is Leonte Carew. He is back. He needs to have a big game tonight. He is a valuable weapon for Chris Laviano. For Michigan State, Shalit Calhoun, 4.5 sacks coming into this game. He'll wreak havoc on that defensive line. L.J. Scott, only a freshman, but the leading rusher for Michigan State. And Steve Longa, the sideline to sideline linebacker for Rutgers. Look for him to have a big game as well. And here come the Scarlet Knights. Number four, Michigan State, two and two Rutgers. More from Piscataway next here on BTN. As the Spartans off to their best start since 2010, and he is standing by down at the field right now with our own Jay Lehman. Plagued by injuries all season long, especially on the offensive line. What kind of challenges does that present you tonight? Well, you know, we just get the next man up mentality, and I, I, I really think that when other guys play, our football team gets stronger overall, so we're ready to go. When you look at Rutgers, what concerns you? Well, I think, you know, just like everybody, they got players. Everybody has players, so they'll come to play tonight. Thanks, Coach. All right, thanks. Hi, right, Jay, thank you. Coach, thank you as well. Take a look at Rutgers interim head coach, Norris Wilson. He will coach this one here tonight. Rutgers head coach Kyle Flood and his three-game suspension ends here tonight. He will be on the sidelines next week when Rutgers takes on Indiana in Bloomington. A gorgeous day, a gorgeous night. Temperatures in the upper 50s, very light winds. Should be a great setting here tonight. Rutgers and Michigan State. Rutgers coming off a bye week two weeks ago. They thumped Kansas here in New Jersey. Michigan State beat Purdue last week to go to 5-0 on the season. Michigan State won the toss, deferred to the second half. So Rutgers will have it as we get going here tonight at High Point Solution Stadium. Underway here in New Jersey. Low kick. First chance for Janarian Grant. Grant across the 25. A playmaker across the 30 in the pile. Surges forward near the 35-yard line. 
and that will be big tonight, the return game for Rutgers against Michigan State's uh, coverage teams. They, Michigan State has not been very good this year in their coverage units. Let's see how that unfolds tonight. Rutgers has a very good return game. You saw it there. Let's see if Rutgers gets Leonte Carew started early in this game. He's been out for a while. I think it's important to get Leonte Carew started early, get him a catch in this first series since he's been out to get this offense going. See the numbers on quarterback Chris Laviano leads the Big Ten Conference in completion percentage at 72%. They will use four different running backs here tonight. And the first play from scrimmage, and Laviano's going to throw, and he throws low, incomplete. Rutgers normally thinking run on first down, but Laviano and company try to mix it up. Second and ten upcoming. That was great edge pressure by Michigan State, just getting up in Laviano's face early on a quick little bootleg. And those are hard underneath the center. They're a lot better in shotgun. You're able to get the ball off a little quicker in shotgun, but when you're underneath the center, you have to flip your hips all the way around. He couldn't do that in time. Good pressure by Michigan State. I saw Shalik Calhoun a moment ago. Middletown, New Jersey, just about 26 miles away from here. Here's the give to Grant, and he's forced out of bounds by Demetrius Cox. And that'll be a loss on the play for Rutgers. It's a loss of one, third and long. Well, it's going to be hard to go sideways on this fast Michigan State defense. And you saw Shalik Calhoun, he didn't make the tackle, but he was near the ball carrier on the sidelines. You saw his speed. But this will be a tough defense to go on the get on the edge with. Uh, Norris Wilson told us yesterday his team has been very good on third down best in the conference in fact but they've been manageable this one is not this is a long one third and 11 and a quick hit on the outside with a burst of speed that'll be a first down there is a penalty marker down in the field so a big game but we'll wait and see on the flag I believe it's coming back Justin Goodwin, they love him on third down, made the catch. Illegal shift on the offense. Two men were moving, did not reset. Third down. So that will negate the big play. Mike Cannon tonight's referee, illegal motion. Wipes out a gain of 16 yards. And what did Norris Wilson say? They need to clean up the pre-snap penalties. That's been plaguing them so far this year. Just clean up the pre-snap penalties. And there's one, there's a case of that right there. They have to clean that up. That was a big game, too. And Rutgers is not very good on third and eight or more. They had a chance for a big first down there. They're last in the league on third and eight or more. And converting. First down markers at the 44-yard line. Laviano backpedaling over the middle, underneath, and he has his man. And it'll be brought down shy of the first down. As it once again went to Goodwin, a gain of 11. That will force Rutgers to punt for the first time here tonight. Offensive corners always go to the screen or draw on third and long. They don't want to, they don't want a risky throw just to get some of it back for field position. You saw the closing speed of Michigan State's defense. R.J. Shelton back to receive this punt from the senior Joey Roth. Very deep punt as that one's going to wobble out of bounds and a poor punt at that. And Michigan State will be set up with great field position on its first offensive drive here tonight. Well, you have a young secondary in Rutgers. So let's see if they come out, if Michigan State comes out throwing the football right off the bat. They take a lot of pride in their running game. They have two really good running backs that are producing this year. But they need to get Connor Cook and receivers off on the right track tonight against a very young secondary. Just a 19-yard punt. So senior quarterback Connor Cook under center. The tailback is Madre London. The tight end in front is Lang. And here is London trying the middle, and he'll surge forward, and the pile keeps on churning. As you look at good news for Michigan State, there's Cody Keeler. He's been out the last three games with a knee injury. Normally a right tackle, but tonight will be at left tackle. That moves Jack Allen back to center. Still no Jack Conklin tonight. We were told before the game, emergency only, but they do get Keeler back. There's an empty formation right off the bat, a throwing formation. Uh, 
On second down and six. Cook with loads of time. Finds Lyles across the 35. It's a gain of 23 yards as Cook finds Lyles, the junior from Southfield, Michigan. The big difference with Connor Cook this year as opposed to last year. Last year he was thrown off his back foot more. Now he's stepping into his throw with more accuracy. You see the accuracy over there, over the middle to Lyles. That has been the biggest improvement to me with Connor Cook from last year to this year, just stepping into his throw a lot better. Cook is just a few yards away from surpassing 1,000 passing yards this season. So on first down, again, they keep it on the ground. This is London. Well, he drops the shoulder and moves the pile forward for a gain of five. You're going to see a lot of Madre London and L.J. Scott tonight. That's their one-two punch. Scott being the number the leading rusher and Madre London being the number two leading rusher for the team. See the numbers on Madre London, redshirt freshman from Fort Lauderdale. Last week against Purdue, finished three yards shy of 100, 17 carries, 97 yards, and a close win over the Boilermakers. On second down, quick hit, Aaron Burbridge with some blockers. Down the sideline, shoved out near the 15. Great block by Tra fullback Trayvon Pendleton on the outside. All you have to do on the, on the quick screens on the outside is get it started. Watch Pendleton out here. Kicks out the corner. And Burbridge has a chance for a, a nice gain and a first down. Get it started with the first block. That's what we always used to tell receivers or fullbacks on screens. It's a gain of 10. Burbridge leads Michigan State in receptions. Yards, touchdown receptions as well. And they'll give it to London, and that is going nowhere. That one stopped by Quinton Gauze, one of the co-captains on defense. Well, Quinton Gauze just came right off the edge. Nobody blocked him. He was free to the ball carrier. That's just a misassignment up front. Backside tackle, Donovan Clark of Michigan State needs to seal that off, seal that edge off. So Gauze can't make that play. That was a good effort by Gauze. Sixth play of the drive upcoming here for Connor Cook. A loss of three. On second down, Cook over the middle, and it's dropped by Burbridge. A catch. That's an easy six. Instead, third and long upcoming for Michigan State. Burbridge was not quite ready for that hot throw. It was coming in hot now. Should have had that football. That was great play action and timing by Connor Cook. Burbridge needs to get, to get his eyes around quicker so he can get his hands up to grab that football. It's the first third down drive. First third down Michigan is facing on its opening drive here tonight. The tailback to Cook's left is London. Cook has to roll. Still searching. He throws, and it's knocked away incomplete. It was contact along the sideline trying to find Burbridge, but Norris Wilson looks on his defense responding, and that'll force a Michigan State field goal attempt. Good blitz by Rutgers, and the offensive line of Michigan State could not pick it up, which forced Cook to scramble to the outside, and with good coverage down the field. That was redshirt freshman Isaiah Wharton on the coverage. It's a 35-yard attempt for Michael Geiger who's 4 of 7 this season. And it's blocked! Rutgers has been doing that for a long time. Since 2009, no team in college football has more blocked punts or blocked kicks than the Scarlet Knights, and that's their first this season. They led the entire nation in blocked kicks last year, and they were up, they've been upset they haven't had one this year. They get a big one. Mera and Gauz, the pressure up front. Wilson applauds. Rutgers with the ball when we come back. Chuck got its first offensive possession here tonight. Had a chance to score six. They dropped the pass. And then watch here. Paul Lang needs to step down a little bit more. Quinton Gauz. Finds a crease, gets his paw up for a big block. Two miscues in a row. 
So Rutgers gets it back in the first carry tonight for Josh Hicks. Maurice Wilson looks on, and there are the numbers. Now 43 block kicks. Most from any program since 2009, and they're averaging four blocks per season, but now they get their first one here tonight. Big reason why is they work all special teams units every day in practice. That's a rare, that's a rarity in college football. Usually you split it up during the week. They work every team every day. It's a gain of three for Hicks. On second down, here is Hicks again. He goes nowhere. Driven back by that terrific defensive front. Malik McDowell, the sophomore, in on the stop. It's a loss of two. This is a big, rugged defensive line of Michigan State. It will be very difficult to run up the middle of this Michigan State defense. They're going to have to mix it up with some counterplay by pulling some guards or tackles to get some angle blocks on that defensive line. And now Chuck, another third and long. This one, third and nine. Rutgers have not been good in this situation all year. O'Clock winding down, and he just got it off. Pressure coming from the outside, and he finds his man over the middle. That's Janarian Grant, but well short of the first down. Well, Michigan State showed a blitz, and then they backed out of it at the last minute. It caused some confusion for Laviano, made him dump the ball underneath. Well short of the first down. Good defense. Nice play by Darian Harris, star linebacker, one of the co-captains. That will set up R.J. Shelton. Michigan State special teams unit for another punt return. A good field position upcoming here as well for the Spartans. A much better punt this time from Roth. Shelton, fair catch called for from inside the 30. That's where the Spartans will take over when we come back. A 46-yard punt, 8.06 to play, opening quarter, Michigan State ball, when we come back on BTN. Football on BTN is presented by the new Pioneer 1000 side-by-side -side from Honda. It's real, it's big, it's here. By FanDuel, the leader in one-week fantasy football. And by Dr. Pepper and college football. It's a one-of-a-kind tradition. Beautiful night here in Piscataway. Final game of our triple header here on BTN. No score. Number four, Michigan State and Rutgers. 8.06 to go on the opening quarter. Michigan State football. From its own 28, Connor Cook back to throw on first down. Hit as he throws. And it's incomplete. Cook has only been sacked one time all season long. At that time, the Scarlet Knights brought the pressure from Quanzel Lambert. Well, they've had some confusion up front with their offensive line. That's, that's what happens when you have linemen shifting around. They've had some injuries up front. Sometimes you lose that chemistry, and communication suffers as well. That's two times they've let somebody right up the middle, which should not happen. Kirk has missed on his last three attempts, so he keeps it on the ground for Madre London. And will get just a couple. This Rutgers defense is fired up right now. They are packing the box with an extra defender to try to stop that vaunted Michigan State run game to get Michigan State in a third long situation. Lambert comes out. It'll be a third and eight. Four receiver package. Tailback next to Cook is London. On third and long, Cook throws and finds Burbridge for a first down across the 45. Had a drop earlier, comes back for a key third down reception, and Michigan State moves the chains. Well, they put Burbridge in the slot at the top of your screen here, and just a little settle route in between the zone coverage of Rutgers and a good back shoulder or back number throw by Connor Cook. Again, that's the senior quarterback throw. A lot of freshmen can't do that. Gerald Holmes is the tailback. We still have not seen L.J. Scott. Seen plenty of London, and now it will be Holmes. He'll try the middle and go nowhere. Longa, Gauze, and others in on the stop. So interesting, Chuck. Yes, we've seen London. 
Had yet to see the Big Ten Freshman of the Week in L.J. Scott, and now we see a carry from Gerald Holmes, who had a good finish against Central Michigan a couple weeks back. Trying to mix it up, and then he saw longest tackle there. He, he's impressive. Watch him on film. He's a sideline to sideline player. Their leading tackler, experienced linebacker, the leader of that football team on, on defense. Rutgers linebacking core, top three tacklers on this team. On second down and 10, R.J. Shelton with a nice leaping grab, and he's brought down, shy of the first down. It'll set up a third and short, but a nice athletic effort there by Shelton. That was a great catch by Shelton because Cook threw it behind him, just a tad. You really need to, Cook needs to open up that left toe a little bit more, open up that left shoulder and get it out in front. Good job by Shelton catching that ball, concentrating all the way down to the ground. Mark D'Antonio looks over. His team facing a third and four. Still Gerald Holmes, the tailback, sixth play of this drive. Coming up for Connor Cook. Rutgers showing pressure. Here they come. Cook throws. There's contact as Medeiros falls down. There is no flag. As Cook and company kind of searching for a penalty marker, they will not get it. Fourth down. Rutgers showing blitz off the edge. They've had two edge blitzes in a row. Trying to confuse the protections. Here's Connor Cook taking a hit, but gets the ball off. Very smart quarterback. Knows how to get the ball off on time, even in the face of a blitz. They'll look for Rutgers to mix it up with their blitz schemes all night long to confuse that protection scheme of Michigan State. Michigan State's punter Jake Hartbarger averaging 45 yards per punt. Low snap! And the punt will be a low liner that'll work its way out of bounds. And once again, Michigan State with a special teams mishap. 11 yards, that's it. Hartbarger and company will head back to the sidelines and Rutgers set up. Good field position. Low snap. A bobble, Hartbarger trying to get it off. The two special teams miscues early, and we're scoreless at Piscataway. No score, 5-19 to play. Look at the Michigan State long snapper. That's Tabor Pepper. It was a low snap from the get-go, then a slight juggle from the punter, Jake Hartbarger. We were wondering if Julian Pinnock's Odrick actually got in there and deflected that punt. He did not. So a couple of special teams mistakes, no score, 5-19 to play in the opening quarter. And Rutgers will start out first down. Here is Robert Martin. His first carry tonight. Of all the backs that Rutgers has at its disposal, Norris Wilson telling us yesterday that Martin runs the angriest. Robert Martin's the number two leading rusher for this team, and he's averaging 6.1 yards a carry. He's been a big play running back for them. Like Michigan State, they have a good stable running backs as well, and both offenses really have good balance. Rutgers has excellent balance between pass and run, and they definitely want to run the ball. That's been their staple. He's Bobbiano on the rollout. Where to go? Little bootleg on second long. You always see the bootlegs or the screen or the draw. On those second long plays, Michigan State was already all over that one. Well, Lawrence Thomas, senior tackle from Detroit. He was chasing after Laviano, who was trying to find Andre Patton. So another third and long. These are the situations that Rutgers, don't, they don't want to get into these third and longs. They've been really good in third and mediums, best in the league at third and mediums or short, last in the league on third and long. Third down and eight. Here comes the pressure. Laviano in trouble, and down he goes. Chris Fry among those that got in there. And there's a sack. Fry picks up his second, a loss of 12. And a solid defensive stand by Michigan State. And the offensive line just could not hold up there. There's miscommunication again up front. Just had a free defender to the quarterback. Those are things you get on the sideline. You have to fix those. You get your quarterback banged up. Oh, Shalik Calhoun also got in there with Fry. It's a short, high punt that's fielded by R.J. Shelton. So Michigan State set up a 31-yard punt, but there is Calhoun playing his first game at his home state since high school. 
who said after his career is over, not just college, but he's going to have a long NFL career. This guy is not ruling out a career as a New Jersey police officer. Good luck getting out of that speeding ticket. We're back in a moment. Town, New Jersey. All American decided to come back in the Cotton Bowl last year to lead this great Michigan State team. Fourth ranked team of the country. And here's the throw to McGarrett Kings Jr. drops the ball, and they're going to rule it incomplete. Well, Rutgers had a corner blitz there. Connor Cook read it perfectly, threw it out to his hot receiver. Kings just couldn't hold on. It's a good sign, though, for Michigan State in that Kings is back. Did not play against Purdue last week with a lower body injury. So second down and 10. Now, Rutgers is playing soft coverage in the back end, a cover too deep. Last snap, and they're lined up the same way. This is usually a, a, a defense you can run on, run the football on. Tailback to Cook's left is the sophomore Gerald Holmes. Cook with time over the middle and a strike across the 40. There's a big play over the middle of the field. And that's the other thing you, you can do against a two deep coverage is have play action fake and linebackers sucked up and throw right behind their ear, right down the middle of the field underneath those safeties. Gain of 23 as Cook finds Burbridge, and now Michigan State picks up the tempo, and they try the ground, and again, Holmes for a minimal gain. There's not, not too many plays in your playbook on, on the tempo offense. Maybe a couple of runs and a couple of passes, and that's it. Sebastian Joseph made the stop defensively for Rutgers. Speaking of Rutgers defense, let's head downstairs and join Jay Lehman. Defensive line coaches were telling Kamoko Ture, attack upfield against those tackles. Make those tackles move for Michigan State. And Jack Allen has replaced Cody Keeler at left tackle. That's a big story there as Cook will go deep over the middle and incomplete. King stretching as far as he could go. So third down and 11 upcoming. And Connor Cook forced that one down the middle, but he threw it high enough so the Rutgers safeties couldn't, couldn't uh, touch the football. But he was staring down that post route down the middle of the field and forced that football. So Cody Keeler out of the game, and he was going to be a game-time decision with a knee injury. He started, but now is out. That moves Jack Allen from center to left tackle and Brian Allen back to center. Michigan State 1-3 on third down. Here comes the pressure. Quick hit as he throws. Incomplete. There's Quinton Gauze once again bringing it for Rutgers. And there is some confusion right now on the Michigan State offensive line and running backs. They're having a hard time picking up the blitzes of Rutgers. And Rutgers is really timing it up well on the snap count. There's Quinton Gauze is coming in unblocked again. And that's usually a missed assignment up front. No to go with the football. Now, one thing Connor Cook needs to do is mix up his cadence. They're timing up his cadence right now. And that usually happens when you're a road team. It's hard to mix up your cadence more on the road with the loud crowd. But he needs to mix it up because Rutgers is timing up their blitzes very well. Rutgers, the best in the conference on fourth down defensively. Fourth and ten. Spartans going for it. And Burbridge with the catch. Inside the 10-yard line, Connor Cook finds Burbridge, senior to senior, gain of 25. And that's the confidence you have in a senior quarterback on fourth and long. Let's go for it. He stood in the pocket. This time they picked up the blitz with offensive line, running back, nice protection, nice throw down the middle of the field. There's nobody in the middle, and, and Connor Cook knew it. Fourth reception for Burbridge up to 75 yards here tonight already. Just the second time Rutgers defensively has allowed a successful fourth down conversion. It's first and goal for Michigan State from the nine. Here is Holmes tripped up. In from the secondary, Blessing Austin, a freshman, a true freshman that plays a ton for Rutgers. And... Defensive coordinator Joe Rossi telling us yesterday he thinks that Austin someday is going to be a big-time player for the Scarlet Knights. Yeah, big-time. The light hadn't turned on quite yet. That'll happen in time with experience, but Austin will be a big-time player in this league in the future. 
That's R.J. Shelton in motion. Quick on the rollout. Has all sorts of time to the end zone. He goes. It's caught. And a touchdown for Michigan State. Just a simple little rollout pass. Very safe throw. It's in every college playbook. This close to the goal line. Nice job of... Oh, good work. That's McGarrett Kings. Nice job by Kings coming back to the football. Notice he just didn't stay put and wait for the ball. He came back to the ball. Connor Cook made that throw low. So only his receiver can catch it. Kings can catch it. Extra point is up and good from Geiger. First touchdown catch for Kings. 11 touchdown throw from Connor Cook this season. So with 1.46 to play, Connor Cook and the Spartan strike, first 7 nothing. You go back to that fourth down conversion. It was going to be a lengthy field goal. And Cook found Burbridge. And then a few plays later, plays later, it was Cook on the rollout with time and found Kings in the end zone. And Cook bought time to make that happen. And Kings stepped back to the football. He just didn't sit there so the defender could knock it down. He came back to the football. Nice execution. That's how you coach it. Good job by Connor Cook just putting it in a, in a good place. Keep it low, but catchable. Here's a note for you. When Michigan State scores first in the great tenure of Mark D'Antonio, the Spartans are 59-9. <laughs> They've had a great start this year. Their first two quarters, they're off the charts with points. Prior to that one, they've had 62 points in the first quarter this season. It's the second half. They, they've bogged down a little bit, but they've, they've been off to great starts in every game. Janarian Grant back to receive. Kevin Cronin will kick it away for Michigan State. And the Spartans will test Grant. Slips away once. Searching. And down he goes across the 20. That's good coverage because Grant is dangerous. Let's take a look at our Honda Pioneer 1000 scoring drive. Capped off by that man right there, McGarrett Kings, his first touchdown reception of the season. Eight plays, 57 yards. Took two minutes and 19 seconds as the Spartans strike first. And the key play, the 25-yard reception on fourth down. Cook finding Burbridge. It set up the Spartans' first and goal. Let's see if they can find some short throws for Chris Laviano just to get it started. Quick throws, that's what he's good at. And they will go on the ground and a hole. And a big one it is. Paul James. The 10 and tripped up. And around the 6. The senior from Glassboro, New Jersey, Paul James. Tore the ACL last season. He was off to a huge start and nearly took it all the way. A 72-yard run. And Darian Hicks made a shot. Shoestring tackle to save the touchdown. Just a big hole. Looks like the defense was way out of alignment. And Hicks makes the play to save the touchdown. But nice job by the Rutgers offensive line. Open that hole. Sets up first and goal. And James again. He's knocked down inside the five-yard line. Riley Bulla. Arjun Colhoun among those on the stop. And that was a rare big play run against the Michigan State defense. Usually they've been giving up big pass plays, but not any big run plays. And that looked like just that somebody got out of the gap. Big gaping hole there, which is uncharacteristic of that defense. Fullback is Sam Bergen. The tailback is still James. Second and goal from inside the Michigan State five. And Laviano drops the snap. Has to go down and pick it up. And that perhaps could be the last play here in the opening quarter. Third and goal upcoming. All of a sudden, your third and goal. You had first down inside the 10. Now your third and goal. And it's a tough play call here. Just a mishandle snap from center. And the last few seconds will tick off. Opening quarter. Michigan State. 
on a Connor Cook touchdown to McGarrett Kings Jr. But that man, Boris Wilson, has his Scarlet Knights with a third and goal when we come back to Piscataway. Entertaining start. There have been some miscues from the Spartans, no doubt, early on tonight. A block kick, a poor snap, but still the Spartans lead by seven after one here on BTN. We are back here in Piscataway, number four Michigan State on top of Rutgers, seven to nothing. And number, number three, a triple header today here on BTN. And as we resume play, it'll be third down and goal. Just outside the five-yard line for Rutgers. This all set up by a long run from Paul James. Rutgers has yet to convert on third down here tonight. Leontay Carew is the wide receiver at the top of your screen. And they go to the end zone. It's caught for a touchdown. And that was a bullet by Laviano. Most defenses do not cover the back two yards of the end line, of the end zone. And a lot of offenses try to attack that area. It's exactly what they did. And they got it to their big play wide receiver. Yeah, there he was. He was at the top of the screen before that play. Extra point is up and good, and we're tied. 23rd career touchdown for that man, Leontay Carew. And it was just a little end line route, a little slant route to the back of the, near the end line. Found a little soft spot in the defense. Here it is. Do a bullet to the back of the end line. Protected by the offensive line. A strike to Leonte Carew for a big touchdown drive. Good job by the offensive line. Protection was a lot better. Their assignment strong. And they got rid of the ball fast. Norris Wilson looking on. Laviano with a seventh touchdown pass, and there is Carew, ended up serving really a 25-game suspension, was suspended on September 13th, arrested and charged with simple assault following a game here against Washington State Bad on September 12th, reinstated Wednesday. Charges were dropped on Tuesday, reinstated Wednesday, back in practice on Thursday. Honda Pioneer 1,000 scoring drive, four plays, 78 yards. Took so just a minute 42 of time. Capped off by that man's 23rd career touchdown catch. Leonte Carew, and we're tied 7-7. See, Norris Wilson did get too excited. Everybody else will be excited on the sideline, but he's been in that head coaching chair before. Got a long way to go. Kari Willis is back with Shelton. This ball will be kicked out of bounds. So speaking of special teams miscues, we saw a few of those from Michigan State, and now one on Rutgers. 35-yard line, first down. And that's one of those that coaches just don't like. When you kick off out of bounds, gives you great field position. You don't want to give this Spartan offense that good a field position to start. They can score in a hurry. It's Chris Goff. With the air and kick. Still no L.J. Scott from the 35-yard line. That's Madre London, the tailback. Pressure coming. Cook off his back foot, throws it away. It's been all-edge pressure by this Rutgers defense so far in this football game is causing havoc for Connor Cook and his offensive line. Let's head downstairs and check in once again with Jay Lehman. Heard Michigan State offensive line coaches say they're going to bring pressure, especially on third down. And then the wide receiver coach said, get your head around, get ready for the ball. It's coming out early. Chuck, you mentioned that on Burbridge earlier in the game when he dropped that pass. Connor Cook is tough to blitz on. He'll find those open receivers quick. He's got a great release. Here they come again. From the outside, and Cook is sacked for just the second time this season. Steve Lunga 
from the outside brought the pressure and Cook sacked. And they're moving Langa all over the formation and blitzing him from different angles. And the offensive line, here he is outside. He's coming out here. And they're having a hard time. There he is that way on the outside. Just came into your screen there. And they're just having a hard time sliding out to pick up that extra man. That's where the running back has to find that extra blitzer at the line of scrimmage and pick him up. Third and 16, Cook deflected away, was trying to set up Burbridge. But there's the freshman once again, blessing Austin, knocking it away. And that was that same back shoulder throw that Connor Cook was trying to get in the soft spot of that cover two coverage back there. He was just a little late with the football. Just a tad late. If he, if he, if he threw it just a tad earlier, he had it. Tad late with the ball. And Austin made a nice play tipping it away. Austin, 6'1", 185 pounds, a true freshman. It's a very young defensive backfield for Rutgers. Hard bargain, not a good punt. And Michigan State has really struggled with their special teams all year. Just a 24-yard punt from Hartberger as Rutgers will have good field position when we come back. Leonte Carew, his first game back. In a couple of weeks, makes a difference. Tie things up. 7-7 here at Piscataway. My father sent me to a Rutgers and resolved that I should be a man. And so I settled down in this noisy college town on the banks of the old Raritan. On the banks of the old Raritan, my friend, where all Rutgers evermore shall stand. Or has she not stood since the time of the flood on the banks of the old Raritan? <laughs> That's great. As a former head coach yourself, how much do you enjoy when your players know the fight song? <laughs> we love that. He needs more tone, though. <laughs> Laviano bobbled and then hauled in by Andre Patton. And now they're getting those quick throws that is paramount in their offense for success. That's what's built around, just quick play action, quick throws. Laviano getting out of his hand. Little in route, little dig route. Nice catch, good concentration. That ball's bobbling around. Stay with the ball. Nice concentration. And Pat, in fact, leads Rutgers. He's averaging 13 yards per catch. He got 14 there. So from the Michigan State 39 yard line. The tie game 7 7. Laviano again will throw. And he's looking deep for Carew. He's got it. Touchdown, Rutgers. He's a big time player. This is a simple go route on the outside, play action go route. Throw it up to your big play receiver. Touchdown. Simple throw, simple route. Whoever Leonte Cruz on, it's a mismatch anyway. Two touchdown receptions. In the opening minutes of this quarter, not a great snap, but a good adjustment on the hold. And Michigan State entering this game tonight, Chuck, had trailed a total of 68 seconds all year. But here they are down seven early on in the second quarter. Have not trailed much at all this year. You mentioned 68 seconds before now. But Laviano's really found the groove right now, and they finally are getting Leonte Carew involved in the offense. Little play action fake to help the tension out, throw it up nice and high. But he is strong at the catch point. That is a mismatch all the way when you have Leonte Carew out there. And senior Colhoun. against, yeah, senior against senior there. Colhoun just couldn't keep up. Looked like Colhoun was stumbling there. Couldn't keep his feet. Nice concentration. Makes the throw. Laviano's fired up. He hung in there, too. He got hit pretty hard by Joel Heath. Defensive tackle. 
That's one of those throws you know at the line of scrimmage you have it. And you're saying, hey, just give me some little bit of protection. I have this throw. A short kick fielded by R.J. Shelton. And they'll drive forward just across the 20-yard line. Look at Leonte Carew back with his team. And we asked the Rutgers coaches on Friday not just what he brings back, because the skill set is obvious, but a senior, a guy that you miss what he could do on the field. And it did not take him too long to get ingrained with the game plan, considering all the time he missed here tonight. Well, they've been missing that big play element in their offense with him out. For today, they only had three 30-yard pass plays, and two of them were his. So the Honda Pioneer 1000 scoring drive. Two plays, 53 yards. Michigan State with the ball. From its own 20-yard line. Here's Holmes. Makes a great cutback. Picks up a block, and he's carrying a Rutgers defender across midfield. And that's just deflating for a defense. You just have a big score. You have, a, you have good coverage on your kickoff team, and then you let Michigan State out with a big run to start. Nice job by Holmes. Now, he's averaging 5.2 a carry himself. He's a big, strong back at 216 pounds. You can see it right there. Just a little simple inside run play right up the middle he found the hole good job by the offensive line and before that his season long was 20 yards and now he drops it out of the incomplete and a quick hit from cook but that last run for holmes went for 30. that was just a quick hitting screen play to holmes they had it all set up the offensive line cut the defensive line they had it all set up on the outside just dropped the ball See that Michigan State offensive line. Jack Allen still at center. Cody Keeler started tonight, but he's on the bench. He's questionable with a knee injury. And here's the quick hit. They keep it on the ground. It's R.J. Shelton on the sweep. And Shelton's your jet sweep player for Michigan State. They use him mostly with the jet sweep. And that's a whole other package in your playbook. The jet sweep package with, with throws off of it. They'll probably get to a throw sometime in this game and fake it to him. But they have a third manageable situation right now. Good news, Michigan State. Cody Keeler back in. Left tackle on third and short. Cook will keep it. And he'll have the first down. He did that a ton against Purdue last week. He rushed for 48 yards at a career-best 22-yard run against the Boilermakers. Third and short picks up 10, and a Michigan State first down. Great call by offensive coordinator Dave Warner. Just a little quarterback keeper off the run play. It's a, it's a run option. He kept it, and every now and then, he, he can run now. They don't want to run too much, but he can run. He will be a valuable weapon as this game goes on with the quarterback one game. Here's Cook with time, looking deep down the side. Kings climbs the ladder, pulls it down. That's going to be a completion and a first down. And that is a great throw and catch. And Connor Cook was looking to his right, came all the way back to his left. That's, that, that's the savvy and intelligence of a senior quarterback. Nice job of throwing it up high. Stopping him before the before he get to the safety. Good concentration by Kings. Look at catch the ball at his highest point. And he maintained possession too as he was coming down. That's a good play by Kings. It was a touchdown catch tonight. So Michigan State inside the Rutgers 15. Here is Holmes as he plows forward across the 10. I'm impressed with all these running backs in Michigan State. Here you have Holmes. Power back. Right up the middle. Little zone play. They've been a heavy, heavy run team in the, in the red zone. You have to be. You have to be able to run the ball in the red zone to be successful. Visiting the Michigan State coaching staff this week. They'll ride the hot hand with their tailbacks. We've seen London. Plenty of homes have yet to see L.J. Scott here tonight. This is 
Williams, another rundown on a second medium. Shelton in motion. And Shelton will get the pitch. And he's dropped for a loss. Anthony Chaffee, the junior from Springfield, who drinks it down to the backfield. And a sound defensive play. Getting too fancy. Uh, Michigan State is getting too fancy right now. They just had a big, big run out of Holmes to play before. Go back to Holmes. There's not a lot of room for reverses when you get this close to the goal line anyway. Chaffee tonight, he was questionable with a lower body injury. Blake Porter, as a freshman and the sophomore, made the switch to free safety here this season. And Rutgers will call a timeout. And we'll step aside. Michigan State with the ball. 9.23 to go in the first half. Rutgers by seven. At one point earlier this season, Oregon led Michigan State seven to nothing. That lead lasted 68 seconds. And up until tonight, Chuck, that's been it. Michigan State has not been in this position much at all this season. Yeah, not at all. That's a remarkable statistic. <laughs> been behind 68 seconds all year. Obviously, they're behind now. And they're on the road. Great team can overcome that. Kings and Burbridge at the bottom of your screen on third and ten. Quick steps up in the back of the end zone looking for Lane. And it's going to be knocked away incomplete. Nice coverage by Rutgers. And good pressure again off the edge. And made Connor Cook step up, throw his rhythm and timing off. He needs to lead that ball a little bit further in the back of the end zone. Aim for the back pylon a little bit more. Lane gets up there, high point, can't bring it in. It's Quanzo Lambert, a defensive end who got back in coverage. It's a 30-yard attempt. Geiger at one blocked back in the opening quarter. Off the upright, but sneaks in. Oh. And that Ruck, Rutgers rush on the kick is relentless. So Norris Wilson high fives for his players and coaching staff. You know, even going back to that last throw from Cook, as we take a look at the they had field goal attempt. They had a chance for another block. The offensive line of Michigan State needs to squeeze more. Too many gaps. Look at that kick go in there. Now Chuck, just to finish up that thought, though, we saw a moment ago Cook try to hit Paul Lang for a red zone score. Haven't seen Josiah Price here tonight. Michigan State's tight end questionable with an ankle injury to not play against Purdue. Would that have been a play a moment ago that Cook would have tried to find Price if he was available tonight? Yeah. Price gives you height. 6-4. That's what you want down there with your tight ends. And when you're in the red zone, your tight ends and your running backs become more prevalent in the pass game. And Michigan State uses those guys as well as anybody in the country. And that's where a guy like Price can really help you out. But that throw, if Connor took the student a little bit further in the back pylon, he might have had a touchdown. He's thrown it again to boot it away. It's a low kick. It'll be fielded by an up man. And Michigan State will kick it away, and Rutgers will take over. That was Archie Diacono on the play as we send it downstairs and join Jay Lehman. New Jersey native Shalit Calhoun gathered the whole Spartan defense and imported them said, let's start playing Spartan defense. We've got to step it up. Uncharacteristic play from the Spartans so far, especially on the defensive front. You agree, Chuck, with what you've seen so far? Absolutely. It's a good observation by Jay. A good report. They let a big long run out. A couple of big pass plays to Carew. They've had some big pass plays against them all year, though. And Laviano finds Carew once again. He has not missed in the second quarter. Laviano now four for four, and three of those completed passes have gone to that man, including two for touchdowns, Leonte Carew. Well, Laviano is in the groove with Carew right now. Quick slant play for the completion. Tailback is Robert Martin as he keeps his feet. 
Got hit a few times, kept the feet moving. And Robert Martin, the sophomore from Harrisburg, with a big game and a Rutgers first down. And Rutgers is going high tempo right now to change it up to keep Michigan State's defense off balance. It's Darian Hicks, junior quarterback. Injured right now for Michigan State. And with him down, we'll step aside here in New Jersey. Darian Hicks helped to his feet. And he'll need some assistance getting off the field. I got some about receivers in Leonte Carew. Hicks with a couple of tackles here tonight. So he will come out. Key member of this self-appointed no-fly zone. Defensive backfield for Michigan State. I can throw it up to Chuck. Here's Janarian Grant. And there's Near a, the first down marker, pickup of nine. There's a rare run on the edge of the Michigan State defense. Grant shows some speed to get to the outside on a jet sweep. Here's Rutgers going fast. Up tempo on a second short. Up by four. And Martin hit and dropped in the backfield. That's Jermaine Edmondson, the junior right corner from Canton, Ohio, with a good play. Loss of three. Again, miscommunication up front by the Rutgers offensive line. Looked like they were all going right and the running back was going left. When you go up tempo, you better get your communication straight in a hurry. Make sure everybody knows it. Sometimes the quarterback then, you can't hear the quarterback and you go the wrong way. Rutgers will take a timeout. That is the Scarlet Knights' second timeout. So it'll be a third and five from midfield. Rutgers with the ball. Up by four when we come back here on VTN. Football 2015 this Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. It's a third down and five from midfield. Laviano setting his protection with this empty formation. Michigan State rushes four, and they get to him. Lawrence Thomas, the senior from Detroit. They rush four. That's all they needed as Thomas picks up his second sack this season. That was Thomas on the sack, but it was Shalit Calhoun off the edge so fast. It made Laviano step up in the pocket quicker than he wanted to. So Thomas made the sack, but that was Calhoun coming off the edge quick. Terrific pressure by the front four for Michigan State, and this will force the punt. And a better punt. Fair catch called for by Shelton. It'll bounce and down inside the 15-yard line. Joey Roth averaging 43 yards per punt. That one went for 42 as Norris Wilson, who doesn't do that too often. As he told us yesterday, he doesn't visit with the quarterback, Laviano, too much during the game. He doesn't, he doesn't want anybody, any of the coaches to talk to Laviano. And he doesn't talk to him much at all. You know, that's not even Laviano. That's J.J. Denman. Right. Right tackle. Yeah, he's probably getting on to him about Shalit Calhoun, but that's a tough matchup. Calhoun's the best in the country. Here is to Madre in London, and he is swallowed up by a bunch of black shirts. And this is a, a, a big drive for Michigan State to punch it out of here. Now they're in a second long situation. Looks for him to start airing it out a little bit with Connor Cook. Two receivers at the top, two tight ends. Right side of the line, that's Lang and Lyons. The tailback is London. On second down, Cook throws high, incomplete. Kings could not pull this one down. Third down. Just a high throw for Connor Cook. Sometimes when he throws to his left, he doesn't open up that left shoulder all the way. And it, it, the throw can to sail on him or he'll throw behind the receiver. 
And that's hard for a quarter, right-handed quarterback to throw to your left. You have to really work hard on that every day. So the numbers on Cook. One touchdown, 131 yards for Cook here tonight. It's third down and 10. Looking deep down the sideline, and the adjustment made, and it's caught by Kings. And Kings is having a great game so far. That was just a simple fade route, back shoulder throw. Everybody's running that now. Nice coverage. But Cook throws it on the back shoulder where only his receiver can make the play. Great job by Kings in concentration all the way down to the ground. Having a hot night so far. Good throw by Connor Cook. But great concentration by, by Kings. Kings with a touchdown catch earlier tonight. And now it's Burbridge on the sweep. And Burbridge is dropped shy of the 40-yard line. Nice little jet sweep. Aaron Burbridge there. Get on the edge of that Rutgers defense. Just a little mix-up by offensive coordinator Dave Warner. That's a play that Michigan State runs off to too, right, Chuck? They run it. It's, keep you, it's a keep you honest play. Keep, keeps that box a little lighter. So you're not heavy in the box, getting extra defenders down in there. And that's their best way of getting to the edge. It's a second down and four. There's Madre in London hitting the backfield and dropped. Maybe a loss of one. Quentin Gauze, one of the co-captains on this Rutgers team, making a play. They are confusing the Michigan State offensive line again. They're showing all kinds of blitz looks, and it's confusing that offensive line. Nice job by defensive coordinator Joe Rossi so far in this game with his mix of plays. And you have to. This is a, this is a good Michigan State team with a veteran quarterback. You have to mix it up all game long. Showing man-to-man -man coverage in the back end with blitz. Here comes the blitz, and it's caught by Burbridge. As Michigan State picked up the pressure on the offensive line, Burbridge got three, and a first down for the Spartans after a gain of eight. And that's exactly what a senior quarterback can do. Just man-to-man -man coverage, just a little curl route or stop route on the outside. And Connor Cook throws it in such a way where you have to come back to the football. And Burbridge did that. That's Again, that's a senior receiver coming back to the ball to ensure the catch. Here's Madre London dropped for a loss. Sebastian Joseph, sophomore defensive tackle from Pennsylvania, made the play. It's a loss of two as we check in once again downstairs with Jay Lehman. I've noticed that the Michigan State offense has been attacking the perimeter for most of their good runs. They're having a lot of problems running the teeth of that Rutgers defense. They look a little bit confused up front. Yeah, that might be the result of a new offensive linemen. They've been inconsistent with all the injuries up there. That's what happens. It's all about communication up front. Jamal Lyles in motion. As Cook will go underneath, and it's caught by Shelton. And he'll drive forward in a nice gain on second down. It was second and 12. He'll be about a yard shy of the first down. And as Jay alluded to, it's all perimeter for Michigan State right now. And this is just a little wide receiver screen. Nice block by Lyles to get it started. To get it right up that alley. Right outside the hash and in between, in between the hash and the numbers. Jack Allen as well. Also got out there to lay a block down and... With that, it's a third and one for Michigan State, down by four under three to play in the first half. They're in a heavy run set here. So the Spartans on third down, four of nine. On third and short, it is London. First down and more as he hurdles across the 40. And they didn't mess around there. They just went right up the gut, got in a heavy formation, right in the teeth of the Rutgers defense. That was an excellent offensive line surge pushing Rutgers off the ball. That's what you like to see out of your offensive line. And it's good they kept Jack Allen at center. He's been a 40-game starter. He's your leader. Try to keep your leader and your veteran at center if you can. Full house backfield on first down. It's London searching for space. And will be driven back before progress will give him about a three-yard gain. 
and they're just trying to eat clock here. So they don't, they don't want Rutgers to have the ball for the rest of the half. So Michigan State, three timeouts remaining. 11th play of the drive coming up. Clock ticking 145, second and seven. Plenty of time. The wide receiver at the bottom of your screen is Burbridge. And Cook is looking that way. Down the field he goes, and Burbridge, a diving catch inside the 10-yard line. And that was a great post-corner route by Burbridge. Here he is at the bottom of the screen. Here's the post route. Ooh, turns the defender around. Good, good throw out to the outside by Connor Cook. Nice concentration on the football. These Michigan State receivers are making some plays with great concentration. It's Burbridge once again working on the freshman, true freshman, Blessed Austin, setting up a first and goal for the Spartans. With 75 seconds to go until halftime. Down by four. Cook will fake the handoff with time over the middle, and it's tipped, and Hester caught it. Was he in bounds? The officials discuss. Off the tip, Kai Hester is going to be ruled with a catch and an interception. That was a rare mistake by Connor Cook of forcing that ball. Now you teach your quarterback to throw it in the back of the end zone. So it's our ball or nobody's ball. But he forced that one in there. Let's see the catch here. He follows it. Does he keep possession going to the ground? Looks like it. Let's see it again right here. Doesn't have it there, but right foot down. The reception now. Does he that left keep toe, continuous possession? That left toe drags while he had possession. So an official review. The replay official is Steve Newman here tonight. If the call stands, that is only the second interception all year thrown by Connor Cook. And he forced that. Should have thrown that ball way out of bounds. Out, out of bounds. Save the play. Go on to the next play. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Interception. First down. Left toes in. Nice interception by Hester. So Norris Wilson and his defense makes a key play, and the guy that picks up the interception, Hester Cook. Mentioned just his second interception all year, just his second career red zone interception. He's been very good in that red zone, and he knew it. He goes, Oh, I need that one back. So now, if you're Rutgers, you're up by four, a minute six to play. Michigan State, three timeouts. Do you stay aggressive, or do you act more on the conservative side here, up by four? But again, Michigan State able to stop the clock. Throw it to Carew. Keep it going. All right. It's been hot. And a quick hit to Janarian Grant and Shalit Calhoun drops him shot of the 25 yard line. And Michigan State not calling a timeout. Keeps running as we approach 50 seconds to go until halftime. We always try to get going on a screen of some sort. That's what Rutgers tried to do there with Grant. Just a little quick screen to get it started. Doesn't look like they're in a hurry right now. You always want to go in the lead in the halftime with the lead. If you have the lead, go into halftime with that. Looks like that's what Rutgers is going to do right now. And Michigan State is not going to stop it. Michigan State did win the toss, deferred, so the Spartans will get the ball to begin the second half as play clock winding down and Rutgers will take its last time out. 20 seconds to go. Rutgers with the ball up by four. Coming up at halftime, the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report recapping a huge day here on BTM, but also across the Big Ten network and throughout the conference as well. Rutgers, no more timeouts. On second down at six, the 
They will run it. Oh, near the first down marker. Oh, the clock will keep on running. Just want to get in at halftime and regroup for Michigan State. Rutgers has the lead. Well, Norris Wilson visiting with Justin Goodwin had the last carry before the half. Chris Laviano has found Leonte Carew, that man there, a couple of times. And Michigan State, for the first time this year, is trailing at the half. Rutgers 14, number four, Michigan State 10. It's been a very entertaining half of football. Hopefully the second half is just as entertaining. The Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report coming up from Chicago next here on BTN. Time in Piscataway. It has been a good half for the homestanding Scarlet Knights. Chris Laviano to Leonte Carew back from his suspension and getting the first touchdown for Rutgers to tie it at seven. And then it is deja vu all over again. It's Laviano, it's Carew. Ten catches on the year, five have gone for touchdowns. 14 to 10 Rutgers on top of number four Michigan State at the half as we welcome you in the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Dave Revson, Jerry DiNardo, Howard Griffith. Jerry, we've been talking about the injuries on the offensive line for Michigan State, and we have certainly seen those rear their ugly head here has been beneficial for Rutgers. Both in the run game and the pass game. In the pass game, it's hurt him with protection. Let me show you three plays, all different down and distances, where Michigan State has struggled holding up against the Rutgers rush. Here, just an inside move against the offensive left tackle. That was a first and 10 play. Here's third and four. Rutgers brings an extra guy. He gets great pressure on Connor Cook, keep him contained. And here's second and 10, again, Howard, they just can't solve the problem sometimes when they bring the extra guy. So if Rutgers continues to get that pressure, they very likely win the game. If Michigan State solves it, Michigan State will be in the game. You know, on the other side of the football, Michigan State's defense, as far as the run is concerned, they've done a pretty good job. Rutgers has rushed for 80 yards, but 74 of those came on Paul James's long run. So they have to continue to try to make this Rutgers team one-dimensional. But if they know the ball's going to go deep to Carew, you better get back there and protect it. <laughs> Well, that has been Got easier to. said than done yeah. for everyone against Leonce Carew. But this Michigan State secondary, as we know, has struggled mightily this year and continuing to in this game. Again, a 14-10 lead for the Scarlet Knights. So running through the rest of the day in the Big Ten, it included number 13 Northwestern against number 18 Michigan. And this one was all Wolverines, absolutely dominant. Up 21-0 in the first quarter against a team that had given up 35 all year after that Jake Rudock touchdown run and then Jordan Lewis the interception he brings it back for a score three straight shutouts for Michigan first time they've done it first time any Big Ten team has done it since 1980 Maryland and Ohio State Randy Etzel under fire rumors swirling about his job future and seven minutes to go in the third quarter we're tied at 21 his team played very well but then Cardell Jones hits Jalen Marshall Jones for, threw for a career-high 291 yards. J.T. Barrett had three rushing touchdowns, takes it in there. They mixed up the quarterbacks, particularly in the red zone. And then it's Ezekiel Elliott. 19 straight wins. They've still never lost a regular season conference game under Urban Meyer. So let's talk through those two games. And, Jerry, we start with the Buckeyes, who did not start all that well, but certainly finished strong. They finished strong, but they also started to find maybe a little bit more of their offensive identity. Cardell had a better game. JT has now become, evidently, their red zone quarterback. And Braxton Miller had eight touches, and so they're trying to get him back in the mix. And it looked like maybe towards the end of the game, the offensive line played a little bit better. I think Michigan and Jake Rudock are playing outstanding football. He didn't turn the football over today, and I think that's very important. You think about them also being able to run the ball, rushing for over 200 yards. So you talk about a team that has a great deal of momentum. We've talked about what's going on defensively for Michigan, but offensively, things are coming together as well. I know. No doubt. And first FBS team to pitch three straight shutouts since <laughs> Kansas State did it in 1995. Again, Michigan hadn't done it since 1980. A remarkable performance in what is becoming a remarkable story. And how about Iowa? The Hawkeyes are still perfect. Show you how they did it. And a game going down to the wire in Lincoln as well as we continue on the Halftime Report. Hey, 
Jerry and Howard back with you. The Buffalo Wild Wings Halftime Report. Indiana and Penn State. And Christian Hackenberg really played well in this one. Brandon Polk, 39-yard touchdown. Hackenberg went over 7,000 passing yards for his career. Just the second Nittany line ever to hit that mark. Only Zach Mills is ahead of him. Hackenberg here today, Sean Hamilton. Worth noting, Indiana was playing without Nate Sutfeld and without Jordan Howard, both still injured. Hackenberg here doing it. <laughs> the dive into the end zone, 29-7. Penn State a winner. They are perfect in conference. Minnesota and Purdue. Minnesota trying to bounce back from the loss to Northwestern last week, and they bounce back in emphatic fashion. How about Shannon Brooks shedding tacklers as he goes? It's called a career day, Rever. A uh, career day. 176 rushing yards for the freshman, 71 on that touchdown, and then that one of four Purdue turnovers. Jalen Myrick brings it back for the score as Minnesota writes the ship in a big way, 41-13. The final, Wisconsin and Nebraska. Howard, you're going to love this. Give it to the feedback! Oh, give me a break with the fullback. This is the longest run by a Nebraska fullback since 1985. Those were the glory days of the fullback. Yeah, Nebraska on top 21-20, but Rafael Gaglianone oh. gives Wisconsin the win in dramatic fashion as another tough loss for Mike Riley. Four losses by 11 points now for Riley. They are 2-4. and four. Illinois and Iowa Hawks try to stay perfect in Jordan Canzeri. You want to talk about career days. <laughs> He was phenomenal from C.J. Beathard there. Iowa up 16 to 7. Panzeri, 75 yards on this touchdown run. 43 carries, a school record. He had the third highest rushing total in school history. 256 yards. And Iowa is indeed still perfect. They are really impressive, Howard. Yeah, they're playing well on both sides of the football, but I think you have to give a lot of credit to the offensive line that's doing a great job of opening up those holes and also being able to protect the quarterback. How about Wisconsin? 322 yards for Stave, winning with the pass ball. And Dari had 117, just enough to make sure Nebraska defended the run. Yeah, no doubt. Agumba Wale playing while Taiwan Deal got hurt yep. early on in that game. It wasn't really a factor, but 50 passes yes. for Wisconsin. First time they've ever won a game in their history when they threw 50 passes or more. Really? First time ever, yeah. You know yeah. yeah, how about that for a good little nugget? That's a nut. Leonte Carew, two receiving touchdowns in the first half. It is Rutgers looking to make it three straight wins over top five teams in Piscataway. Gotta go back a while. Welcome back to Piscataway at the half. Number four, Michigan State is trailing. Rutgers by four. Kai Hester, a key interception in the red zone. Just the second interception thrown by Connor Cook all year. A key play. There were many. That break, the number four team in the country, is trailing at the half for the first time all season, 14 to 10. And with that, we welcome you back to Piscataway. Alongside Chuck Long, I'm Corey Provis. First half impressions, Chuck. Well, it just it was big plays on both sides of the football. And good, well-balanced offenses, but big plays on the defense. I thought Michigan State had problems in their offensive line picking up that Rutgers blitz. They need to get that short up at halftime. Otherwise, it's going to be a long night for Connor Cook and company trying to get the ball off. And Rutgers special teams really non-existent up until tonight. That group played havoc with Michigan State specifically in the opening quarter. As we take a look at the first half highlights, Chuck, you know, this was kind of a back and forth game early, but here we see some miscues early on. Well, Michigan State has some miscues in their special teams department all year long. And here it is again today. And then here's the touchdown pass to Cook. The Kings good roll out and score. Here's a big play. Paul James finding a crease against that Michigan State front seven. And then it's all Laviano to Peru. From here on out, big touchdown there. The big, long pass play to Peru. The mismatch there. Not a lot of yardage for Rutgers, but big plays. As we take a look at the first half numbers, and the turnovers to me stands out pretty big. Michigan State entering this game tonight, plus nine the turnover margin. They have coughed it up once. They have not turned it over yet. 
At least Rutgers has played a clean first half football. Well, well stats are deceiving. <laughs> Rutgers is winning the game. If you look at that, if you look at it right now, you'd think Michigan State would be winning, but it is where stats are deceiving. Michigan State's really controlling the ball and the yardage. But as you mentioned, Corey, the one turnover where Rutgers has protected the football. See 61 yards in the ground for Michigan State. Did not see LJ Scott at all in the first half. The reigning Big Ten freshman of the week. Aaron Burbridge has been big, but the Rutgers defense has come up big as well. Rutgers by four at the break. Football on BTN is brought to you by Auto Owners Insurance. The no problem people. Find your agent at autoowners.com. And by Transamerica. Transform tomorrow. Beautiful night here in Piscataway. Moments away from the second half. From High Point Solution Stadium in New Jersey, Rutgers 14, Michigan State 10, as we take a look at the Quicken Loans quarterback comparison. Well, Laviana has a better percentage right now than, than Connor Cook. Connor Cook has bigger plays, but it gets down to touchdowns and interceptions at the end of the day. And right now, uh, Chris Laviano is leading in that department. That's why they're up. Laviano has been effective in the pocket on the rollout. Connor Cook and the Spartans will have the ball first to begin the second half down by four. And yes. Connor, Connor Cook's a senior. He's He's been in these situations before, and, you know, it's, it's going to be his poise that gets him through, gets Michigan State through the second half. Before the second half begins, let's check in downstairs with Jay Lehman. Got a chance to check in with Coach Wilson about Rutgers' first half. He said, I love the way we're keeping them off balance defensively. Showing one way, blitz the other way. We're going to continue to pressure. Coach Antonio was really upset. He said, special teams has been horrible. The snap, the shake punt, the block field goal. Not happy about the big run they gave up to Paul James that got him all the way down to the seven-yard line. And I asked him, guys, how come L.J. Scott did not play in the first half? He said, quote, He's hampered a little bit, but did not give specifics on the injury. That's a great report. Thank you, Jay, because we were wondering that. L.J. Scott, the right. reigning Big Ten freshman of the week, coming off a huge game against Purdue, is yet to play. So good report there from Jay Lehman. Second half underway. Rutgers by four. Michigan State with the ball. This is R.J. Shelton. Still on his feet across the 20 and dropped. Across the 25-yard line. Let's see if... Defensive coordinator Joe Rossi of Rutgers dials up those same edge blitzes as Jay was talking about to keep that confusion going for the Michigan State offensive line. It worked in the first half. Let's see what they have for the second half and what kind of adjustments Michigan State has made. Instead of man protection schemes, they may have to go slide protection schemes, meaning just secure a gap instead of the man over them. Running back is Madre London. He'll get the first chance and go nowhere. Steve Longa has been busy. He's been busy all year. The leading tackler for the Rutgers, the linebacker making the play on first down. And I'm impressed with Steve Longa, and they move him around all over the place to, to keep him free. And he's the leading tackler also because he has those, those big men up front that are protecting him so he can roam sideline to sideline and get downhill and make those tackles. But I'm impressed with Steve Longa. Entering Great play presence. here today. Longa fifth in the conference in tackles. He has seven alone here tonight. No gain. Cook's first pass attempt here in the second half. Pressure coming and gets away. Keeps his feet, looks downfield, wide open, finds a man. That's Burbridge upended across the 50. Cook was hit but stayed on his feet. Kept the play alive in a big play. And that's what, when you're 220 pounds and strong, it's hard to get Connor Cook down on the ground. This is all Connor Cook making this play. Because Rutgers faked the blitz, came out in coverage, had great coverage down the field, but the poise and presence of Connor Cook on the scramble made, made it happen for him. Gained at 25 yards. Meanwhile, Aaron Burbridge having a monster game. Seven catches, 136 yards already for the senior from Michigan. Here is London. He'll try the middle and stood up. So again, Michigan State, Chuck trying to run the ball on first down, but the front line 
on the Scarlet Knights. They're not giving anything away. They were 75% coming in this game on first down and running the football. That's what they want to do is run the football, and Rutgers is doing a great job. Obviously, they did a great job scouting first down, knowing it's 75% run, Michigan State. Load up the box and stop it. The offensive line, Jack Allen at center. Cody Keeler's been in and out in the first half. He was questionable with the knee injury. Did start. He's in at left tackle here tonight. Normally a right tackle. Here's Cook throwing and a diving catch made once again. It's Burbridge. The receivers from Michigan State, Burbridge, and Kings have come up big tonight. Because Connor Cook has not made great active throws all night. So a lot of them have been low like this. Look at that concentration by Burbridge. All the way down to the ground. And Burbridge, a good story. A guy who was injury plagued early in his collegiate career. He's having a heck of a senior season. Came in leading the team in receptions, yards, touchdown receptions. He's had a big game and far from done. Heavy tight end set usually means a run. Michigan State's connected on four of its last five third downs, and they'll keep it going. On third and short, it's Madre London surging forward for a first down. And there was a counter play. When you're struggling with this zone for zone blocking, go to the counter play, pull a guard, lead with a fullback or a tight end, get some angle blocks on those defenders. Always a good weapon when you're struggling with just zone blocking. Nice execution for a first down. Let's see if they can throw the ball a little bit more on first down. Heavy tendency of running the ball for Michigan State. From the 32. They do keep it on the ground once again, London. And they'll get maybe a yard. That's it. Yeah, just trying to go back to a lead play with zone blocking up front. And they have not had good success with that blocking scheme against this front of Rutgers. Kevin Wilkins made the tackle. Redshirt freshman, 6'3", 295. Gain of one for Cook and the Spartans, who are down by four. Early stages, third quarter. Roberts and Kings at the top of the screen. It's Paul Lang, the tight end, lined up at the bottom of the screen. And Cook finds Lang. Drops the shoulder and will plow forward for a couple more. A lot of backups in this game for Michigan State. Paul Lang listed number three tight end. Coming up big with just a simple little boundary route. Wide open on the boundary. It's his fifth catch all year. Back on the ground they go, and it's London. He'll try the right side. He'll get a couple. Blessed Austin in on the stop for Rutgers. Good hard running by Madre London. Another big back for Michigan State. 216 pounds. Very powerful. They have big backs here in this offense. London redshirted last year, was on the scout team. Jeremy Langford, who had a huge game against Rutgers last year in East Lansing. Michigan State won that game huge, 45 to 3. But London redshirting last year, a key component this year. Ninth play of the drive. From inside the 15 yard line. Again, it's London. Not much. Michigan State's showing some different formations and motion. And you do that when a team has blitzed you. And what motion and shifting of formations does is temper that blitz. Well, there's an injured Spartan, and that is Madre London. So he is down. 9.45 to go in the third, and we'll be back in a moment. Right leg, and we'll find out why here momentarily. You see him get tangled up here on a tackle. Looks like his right leg gets twisted here on the tackle. Oh, gets bent back. And as you said, Corey, that's the last thing they need right now. And Jay Lehman telling us a moment ago, if you're just tuning back in after halftime, L.J. Scott has not played. An undisclosed injury is keeping Scott from playing right now. Gerald Holmes has played the times tonight. For Michigan State in the backfield. But right now it's an empty backfield. As Kings goes in motion. It's a third and five. 
Crook. Crook the quick pitch and finds Kings as he plows to the goal line. And they're going to mark him down just shy of the goal line. The shovel pass to Kings, and he came just short of a touchdown. Great offensive call by Dave Warner, the offensive coordinator. A little shovel pass, good eyes by Connor Cook. A little deception there, shovels it underneath to Kings. Excellent play call. Had Rutgers off balance there. Rutgers couldn't get lined up on the formation. Didn't get in. Good call by the officials. He did not break the plane. So from the one, here is L.J. Scott, and he's in. His first carry is a touchdown for Michigan State, and the Spartans are back on top. They brought in Superman at the right time. Just an off, off between guard and tackle play. Easy little zone play. Showing some power getting into the end zone. His fifth touchdown of the season. So Connor Cook and the Spartans drive. First possession here in the second half. And Michigan State back on top by two. And Geiger trying to make it a three-point lead. And he does. Yeah. So L.J. Scott, the reigning Big Ten freshman of the week. He's won that honor twice. He rushed for nearly 150 yards last week in two scores against Purdue. Has his first carry, first score tonight, and the Spartans are back on top. Great deception play that fooled the Rutgers defense. That brought him down to the one. L.J. Scott then punched it in, and Michigan State back on top. See if Rutgers could answer on his first possession in the second half. Janarian Grant doesn't need much room as he will kind of move forward across the 30, spinning and bouncing off tacklers. Now, BTN has you covered all week long as we get you up to speed in all things college football. First at 6 Eastern, join the conversation at BTN Live. Then we cover the entire college football landscape on Big Ten football and beyond. Weeknights on BTN. And BTN to go. L.J. Scott, as we found out at halftime, hampered by an undisclosed injury, got a chance with Madre London out with an injury. And Scott and the Spartans lead by three, but now it's up to Laviano and the Scarlet Knights to respond. It is to James, flag down, thrown in front of the Rutgers. Near the Rutgers sideline. Fall start. Referee tonight, Mike Kim. Illegal formation. More than four players in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Replay first down. Those are the mistakes. Norris Wilson telling us yesterday, if they're going to win this game tonight, Chuck, that can't happen. Yeah, it's the pre-snap penalties that drive coaches crazy. You can live with the penalties during a play, aggressive penalties, but not pre-snap penalties. It drives coaches crazy. Usually it means they run a little extra in practice. Robbiano had a great second quarter, five for five, 70 yards, through for two touchdowns. And now, he'll drop the ball. He does quickly recover. Michigan State was coming, and now Rutgers losing even more yards. The penalty now, the drop from Laviano. Not sure what was happening there between Laviano and his running back. He's, he's fading back here. It looks like he's trying to get, oh, just didn't get the ball in there. There's a draw play and didn't get it in. You have to get it in on the far number, not the near number. Near number usually comes out. You have to put that ball in the far number. It's a loss of 10, second and 25. As Laviano empties the backfield. Comes near side and overthrown, incomplete. He's once again seeking James. And Third and forever for Rutgers, down by three. And Chris Laviano needed to make that throw, and just an easy flat throw to the outside just to get some of the yardage back because they're third and forever right here. Now, what you tell your quarterback here is, hey, don't make a big mistake. We're, we're probably going to have to punt the ball here. Let's get some of it back, give our punter more room, get some field position. Don't force the ball, especially over the middle. And Leontay Carew is at the bottom of your screen, lined up. Against Arjun Colhoun. Laviano will just throw it away. And they were trying to set up the screen pass, which is a staple on third next to long. Of course, defenses know that too. 
Well played by the Michigan State defense. And Laviano had no choice just to throw it into the ground. Live to fight another day. Another play. Punt the ball away. So Monte Nicholson and the Spartans force. Rutgers to punt it away and R.J. Shelton back to receive. Joey Roth, the punter for Rutgers. Pressure coming and he gets it underway. He gets it off. And here is Shelton. And a fair catch called for and Michigan State will have it from its own 49-yard line after a 33-yard punt. Nice shot of the New York City skyline not too far from here in Piscataway. Michigan State with the ball up by three. At the end for the national championship. Ohio State winning once again today. Tested for a while by Maryland, but the Buckeyes ended up winning by a significant number. L.J. Scott will get the carry and he'll surge across midfield for a gain of four. So Scott with his first well, attempt outside of the rushing touchdown he had a moment ago. Scott, who's out of the backfield here on first down. As Norris Wilson looks on, he gets the sense that his defense needs to make a play here, Chuck. Well, you have Scott now who's fresh. You know, he hadn't played all day. Now he's fresh against the defense that's getting tired. They've been out there for a while. This is where all of a sudden a big run happens. A missed tackle and a big run. And he is a load, 233-pound true freshman. Now Brian Allen. 65 is now at center. Jack Allen from center to left tackle as Cook will throw looking deep and Lang pulls it down for a big play. Once again, Paul Lang, his second catch tonight. That one goes for 20. And Paul Lang making the most of his opportunity tonight. It's Kai Hester, the injured Rutgers player. Richard freshman strong safety. Made the great interception earlier. In the first half. It's a very young defensive backfield. As Hester is down, we'll step away here in New Jersey. I've been impressed with the receivers, the, the pass catching tonight for Michigan State. Most of these have been contested and not on the mark throws by Connor Cook. They're coming down with it. Cook five for five this quarter. Make it six for six as he finds Burbridge on a screen. And a gain of about two. Little, little wide screen. Rutgers is all over that. One thing about those screens, that a lot of people run them just to get that defense running to the ball and get them tired. Because that's a long way to run to tackle the screen. So even if it doesn't work, when I was coaching it, called it, I wanted big gains. But if I didn't have a big gain, at least I had that defense running and getting tired. Lyles in motion, Scott to the right of Cook. Pressure coming, and Cook is hit. Down he goes. And the Rutgers sideline begging for a flag. As the officials talk things over, he was certainly not outside the tackle box. That ball was... Well, did not cross the line of scrimmage. Number three was in the area. Yeah, that was a Third screen down. pass. It was a screen pass, and... L.J. Scott just got caught up in the wash. He, he couldn't get out. Watch L.J. Scott, the running back. He's trying to get out on a, on a screen. He just couldn't get it out. Here it is again. Oh, he's getting hit there. He's getting hit going down. Ooh. Sets up a third and eight. Scott with a key block. Cook with time. And he's got his man. Touchdown, DeAnthony Arnett, the redshirt senior from Saginaw. His first catch tonight, a 25-yard touchdown play. Cook to Arnett, and Michigan State strikes again. What a throw and catch by Arnett. He just, get, he, he just got separation. Here he is on a little wheel route at the bottom of the screen. He stops and gets a little bit, ooh, pushed off a little bit. They didn't catch that. Transfer from Tennessee, second touchdown reception this season. Just got enough separation at the end, and Connor Cook just laid it out there perfectly. These receivers are doing a great job of catching the ball. Uh, Cook has options, doesn't he, Chuck? He's got weapons. 
experienced weapons, Burbridge, Kings, Arnett, redshirt senior. There it is again. We're seeing if he crossed the line. Looks like a touchdown to me. There's a wide view down. He's got a little bit of separation here. Great throw by Connor Cook. Did he cross the plane? That's what they're looking at right now. He brings the ball back a little bit. Right. Brings it back. Connor Cook has so much confidence in these receivers. He just lays it up there in tight coverages, knowing that they're going to come down with the football. If it stands, just the fourth catch all year for Arnett, but his second touchdown. So Norris Wilson looking on, but that man right there, Connor Cook, two possessions his team has had in the third quarter, two touchdowns. After review, the call in the field stands, touchdown. Arnett getting in on a little action tonight. Saw his buddies getting in a lot of action. He wants some. Nice concentration. So now Geiger for the extra point to give Michigan State a 10 point lead, and he knocks it right through. Connor Cook has now surpassed 300 yards passing tonight. A couple of scores, including one to that man right there, DeAnthony Arnett. So here is Cook in the pocket. L.J. Scott picked up a key block as well, and Cook hits Arnett. D'Antonio was not happy at the half. He's happy now. His team is up by 10 here in the third quarter. Touchdown passes tonight. He's now one shy of 60 in his career, which would be the third Michigan State quarterback to do that. 60 touchdown passes. One of the likes of Kirk Cousins and Jeff Smoker. Was Janarian Grant as he pushes the pile forward across the 20. Chuck, let's go back to that last touchdown play a moment ago. For you viewers at home, this is slide protection. They slide this way, and the back takes the end man or the nearest blitzing defender. This is protection. Helps your passing game. Good job by L.J. Scott taking the end man and blitzer. Allow that play to happen. The nice. passing game is all about protection. Steve Longa, too, who's been active tonight. He was coming, if not for L.J. Scott, just getting enough of Longa, who knows, and looked like Cook had an extra second there because of that block to find Arnett for the touchdown. Let's see if Laviano and Rutgers can answer down by 10. This place is quiet. Off his back foot, he throws and hit immediately. It was Nick Archidiacono, junior tight end, for a gain of about one. Let's head downstairs and check in with Jay Lehman. Cornerback Darian Hicks is questionable return and went out in the late in the second quarter. Jermaine Edmondson comes over from the other corner position to take his spot. So Josh Butler, the freshman who's talented, doesn't have to burn the red shirt. The coaches are trying to save it. Yeah, the word we got on Butler, he has to make sure he stops by Coach D'Antonio before he checks into the game. Here's the run on the ground. And a nice carry for Josh Hicks. Sophomore from Palmetto, Florida. 5'10", 215, working off the right side. And those Michigan State safeties are low. They are within seven yards of the line of scrimmage. Be careful when you have a guy like Carew out there. He can run by you. But they, Michigan State likes to put those safeties down low. And once again, it is Hicks. Nice hole up the middle. After a gain of 10, picks up about eight. Rutgers running gap scheme, counter scheme, pulling some linemen, getting angle blocks on those big Michigan State defenders up front. That's the very best way to move the football against a big front four like Michigan State. Hard to go toe to toe with them. You got to get angle blocks with guys pulling. Archie Diacono in motion. Here is Hicks off the left side. And he'll have a first down as he tumbles near the 45-yard line, a gain of four. And assistant head coach Norris Wilson. He is the running backs coach. And this is his last game as the interim head coach. Kyle Flood returns next week. Rutgers will be in Bloomington taking on Indiana. Kyle Flood serving the third and final game of his suspension here tonight. 
Kyle Flood, he's coaching throughout the week, but right. the time of his suspension from midnight Friday through midnight Saturday, no contact with the team. There's Hicks on the toss. Ball came loose, but he's down. No gain on the play as we look more into the coaching career of Maurice Wilson and look at the years at Columbia. First ever African American head coach in the Ivy League. Wilson was at Columbia 2006 2011. Running backs coach right now, the assistant head coach and the interim head coach once again here tonight. And we had a great conversation with him yesterday. Just a great personality, great storyteller. We loved having that meeting with him. Got confrontational at one point. Former Gopher and a former Hawkeye in you. Here's Leontay Carew. As Laviano hasn't been throwing much on this drive, a lot of plays on the ground. He goes back to the air and hits Carew for a 17-yard play. And that's just a little quick slant off of play action. Here he is on a little slant pattern. Good job by Laviano to put it on his back shoulder so he can spin to the outside where there's less defenders. Good throw by Laviano. See the numbers tonight on Carew. Four receptions, a couple of touchdowns. First down, Rutgers. And this is Robert Martin as he squares the shoulders and plows for about eight. As Carew checks back in, we check in downstairs with Jay Lehman. I've been watching Leontay Carew on this press coverage from Michigan State. He has not been, been jammed one time solidly tonight. Allows him to get great timing, Chuck, and get into his route quickly. They better, they better start jamming him. He's too fast not to jam. He'll run right by you. Eighth play of the drive, but again, it's on the ground. And this is Hicks with a flag thrown at around the 30-yard line, brought down shy of the first down as we wait on the penalty. It looks like a hold on Rutgers, and these are drive killers because they had a nice drive going here. Holding offense number 42. Ten-yard penalty, replay second down. It's on the junior tight end, Archie Diacono. Had, had a nice drive going here. 42 right here. Looks like he had that right arm around the back. But this is what kills Rutgers, kills any team. Had a nice mix of plays there of run and pass. And had good rhythm going in their offense, too. Had Michigan State off balance. And now you have a holding call, now they're second long. It's Archie Diacono working on Demetrius Cooper. 6'5", 245. Cooper, Archie Diacono, 6'5", 240. So second down and 12. Under two to go in the third quarter. Rutgers with the ball down 10. Calhoun off the edge, rushing the first. Laviano finds Carew, and they get a lot of that back. As Carew is down inside the 30, it'll present a third and one, a gain of 11. As we check in now in Chicago, here's my call. Corey, this is an update that Spartan fans might find interesting. The number two team in the country, TCU, is in trouble late. This Joe Hubner touchdown run means with eight and a half to go, TCU's down 11. Wow. <laughs> Kansas State, Bill Snyder, Manhattan, Kansas, tough place to play. Well, Laviano on third and short is looking deep to Carew. Those two not on the same page. So fourth and one, down by 10. You like the call. Rutgers going for it. Absolutely. The tailback is Hicks. On third and short, Hicks driving forward near the first down marker. Had to get to the 28-yard line. And really just inside the 28. Looks like he has it from our vantage point. You know Norris Wilson, the running back coach, is going to go for it on fourth and one. Rutgers three of five on fourth down, and now make it four of six. First down, Rutgers. Had him in second long. They fought back to get to a fourth and one, just right up the gut, push up front. Good leg drive to get that first down. That's all running back. Hicks leading Rutgers in rushing yards and touchdowns. Picks up the fourth down conversion. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. And a whistle before the snap. Looked like a timeout. Looked they had a wrong formation. 
It's Ben McDaniels, the Rutgers offensive coordinator. Charge timeout, Rutgers. They're first. So Rutgers using its first timeout. So we'll step aside. 55 seconds to go in the third. Rutgers driving down by 10 here in Piscataway. Next up for Michigan, the visitors from East Lansing. Michigan, Michigan State next weekend. Laviano off his back foot. Has Carroll open. Touchdown, Rutgers. Set, play action, post corner by Leonte Carew, and Michigan State secondary just can't cover him right now. Play goes for 28 yards. Laviano to Carew for the third time tonight. Carew six catches, 108 yards, three touchdowns. Extra point is up and good. From Kyle Federico, the senior, there is a flag on the field. This will be on Michigan State. It'll be declined. Extra point is up and good as we go back to the touchdown Chuck Laviano to Carew for the third time tonight. Watch the corner out by Leonte Carew. Wide open. And there was a heavy run set to set it up. Heavy run set, play action. Gets behind the secondary. Here's the high end zone look. They had a, three guys in the backfield. They just couldn't, couldn't keep up with them. Great play action fake by Laviano in that heavy run set. Great play call by Ben McDaniels, the offensive coordinator. That was, that was Carew also getting by both safeties. Monte Nicholson and number seven, Demetrius Cox. Carew up to 25 career touchdown receptions. Reinstated Wednesday, practice Thursday. And we asked Ben McDaniels yesterday during our meetings, how many snaps? They kept calling it pitch count. What's the number on Carew for the game? And they said, eh, we're not really going to tell you, but he's going to play. Keep pitching it. <laughs> Keep going on that pitch count. So Rutgers answers back a short kick. This is R.J. Shelton across the 30-yard line. He has had a special night. It's been a great night for all wide receivers, both sides of football. But Peru is special. Touchdown number one. And then deep. That by Archie Colhoun. The touchdown number two. And now this one a moment ago. Getting by the two safeties. Three touchdown catches for Leontay Carew. Co-captain Rutgers within three. Here's Michigan State trying to answer on the ground. That's Gerald Holmes. We saw him quite a bit in the second quarter. Just the up the middle run inside zone for Gerald Holmes. That was Delton Williams, a bigger part down the Williams. carries. Yep. A junior from Erie PA. Cook over the middle. Arnett in traffic. Hangs on, took a shot, caught it. First down, Michigan State. These receivers are impressive tonight. I mean, Connor Cook throws it right at him, is contested, and he still makes the play, makes the catch. Great concentration on a contested catch. So it's a 17-yard play, and that will be the final play here in the third quarter. At the break, Michigan State was down by four. But Connor Cook and the Spartans, two quick touchdowns, but then Rutgers a moment ago answering with a touchdown score themselves. Fourth quarter should be fun. Michigan State with the ball, up by three. Prime time here on BTN. It's been a good one. The fourth quarter from Piscataway next here on BTN. 
Fourth quarter from High Point Solution Stadium. Here in Piscataway, New Jersey. Michigan State with the ball leading 24-21. Spartans with a first and 10 from inside Rutgers territory. And once again, it is Williams. His second carry, and he stood up. No gain, maybe a loss of a half yard. Quinton Gauze, one of the Rutgers co-captains, made the stop. The strong side linebacker. And Gauze, like Longa, has been all over the field as well. And this Rutgers defense is fired up. And don't forget, Mission State has struggled in second halves, and especially in the fourth quarter of games this year. They're on the road. That's a great point. But the third quarter tonight, different story. Michigan State, terrific offensively in the third. And now facing a second down and 10. Cook. To the far side, R.J. Schultz in the reception, knocked out inside the 45-yard line. They'll mark him down at around the 43. Getting back to Quinton Gauze, redshirt senior from Rochester, New York. Bringing in their third down. Pass rushing specialist, Moko Ture. Been kind of quiet tonight. It's nine and a half career sacks. Michigan State, eight of 13 on third down. Cook to the sideline and is dropped by Monty Medeiros. There is a flag down as Cook was hit. And here's the call from Mike Before Cannon. the play, false start. Offense, number 76, five yard penalty. Third down. down. It's the first penalty on Michigan State as Cook is limping around a little bit, Chuck. Here's a false start by the right tackle, Donovan Clark. Just can't hear sometimes, can't hear the cadence. Not sure when to start, especially a tackle. So the penalty makes this a third and nine. Michigan State's converted the last six third down attempts. Here comes the pressure over the middle. Shots and the catch brought down well shy of the first down. Andre Hunt, a guy that Rutgers loves in the nickel package, made the key stop. And Rutgers has, they, they did not bring the blitz much in the third quarter. Here they came with the blitz finally. Pressured Cook. Had to get rid of it quick to his outlet receiver over the middle, but... Certainly not enough for a first down. Great defense by, by Rutgers. Perfect blitz call again by defensive coordinator Joe Rossi. To force the fourth down punt. And that punt is booted away. And it's going to bounce inside the 10-yard line. And a good punt there. Nothing for Janarian Grant to do. So a good punt. I think that's Tyler O'Connor, the backup quarterback, with that punt. And Rutgers will have it when we come back. 30 of these Scarlet Knights travel to Bloomington to take on Indiana. Next Saturday, pregame begins at 10.30 Eastern on BTN and BTN to go. Wisconsin, a thrilling win today in Lincoln. So, Laviano and the Scarlet Knights down by three. Deep inside their own territory. Robert Martin. On the carry, he'll try the right side and get maybe a yard. Well, just a run set, trying to punch the ball out of there on first down. Michigan State's defensive line will have none of that. Get him in a second long. This is tough play calling down here for Ben McDaniels. Coming off your goal line against a, a big-time defensive front. No gain on the play. Full house backfield on second down. And here is Martin again. A little more room this time. As he'll pick up about five. And it gets him in a third and manageable, which Rutgers is, is the best in the Big Ten at third and medium or less. And that's how their off offense operates, to get those third manageables. And Laviano's really good at underneath passing. Rutgers has struggled on third down tonight, just one for seven. That's Martin now leaving the backfield. 
Lined up the top of your screen on third and five. Pressure coming. Laviano escapes. Laviano stretching near the first down marker. Somehow he got out of there. Pressure was coming. Laviano kept his feet. The extra dive picks up a Rutgers first down. Great effort by Laviano here. He was sacked. He just ducks enough. Then makes a play with his feet, stretches for that first down. That's a huge, huge play for Rutgers. And that was Malik McDowell that nearly had Laviano near the one-yard line. And he just ducked. He ducked just enough to get underneath his, uh, McDowell's arms and, get, and squirt it out of there. Clock will stop, 10.45. They're going to take a look at this to see where Laviano was down. Let's see where the knee touches with the football. So they re are reviewing the spot as we take a look. But watch number four, McDowell. A couple of hands on Laviano, but he escaped. The cut back. And there's the knee. He goes down. It looks like the ball is over the line. There's a good look. Laviano stretching, not down. Now he's down. And to be indisputable. Watch the elbow here. The elbow comes down now. Where is that point of the ball? The line to gain was right at the 15-yard line. Just a great effort by Laviano, though. He was sacked. And we're Good gonna have the move call. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. It's the second third down conversion for Rutgers tonight. And remember that this was a team that came in leading the conference in third down conversion rate at 50%. This ground rushing. Rutgers last year did not get there. They were held under 100 yards. As Michigan State won big in East Lansing, 45-3. On first down, there is the carry. And that is Martin again. He'll have another first down as he picks up 10. And Rutgers has found some running room off tackle in the last couple of series. Instead of going right up the middle, they found a little running room off tackle. Good mix by Ben McDaniels. Going inside, outside, and throwing the ball. And that secondary is tight now. Be careful of the long pass off the play action. That's Carew at the top of your screen. He has that in his game. It's time to stay with the ground game. And Martin, again, will pick up maybe one this time. As Mark D'Antonio looks on, Michigan State has won 10 straight Big Ten road games. As time is halted, an injured player. That's all they need. And that's Lawrence Thomas, senior defensive end from Detroit. And he's quickly on his feet. It's a good sign. You now, Michigan State's defense, the way it's set up is to stop the run. And they put a lot of pressure on the corners to cover the pass. A lot of man-to-man -man coverage on the outside in this scheme with not much safety help because they want those safeties to play the run. Two tackles and a sack for Thomas as he leaves, and we check in downstairs with Jay Lehman. Chuck, speaking of that man-to-man -man coverage, they've run the lead playoff tackle a couple times. At what point do you say, let's take a shot downfield at number four, Leonte Carew? Well, they did it already for a touchdown and a heavy run set, and the way those safeties are tight, look for it pretty soon. Here is the rollout, and Laviano throws high and finds Carew. Sooner than I thought. Yeah, there's the play. <laughs> there it is right there that Jay was talking about. Those safeties are tight, and, and Carew, they, they can't cover Leonte Carew right now. Those corners cannot cover him. They need to get a safety to help. Demetrius Cox brought him down, but not before. Rutgers Same into Michigan State territory. Same exact pass play the touchdown was. Just a little corner out, wide open. 
And the play action pass again. Laviano steps up and he'll dive forward. A gain of a couple. Smart play by Laviano there. Mission State had coverage down the field. Really smart playing by Laviano tonight. For a young sophomore quarterback. See the numbers on crew tonight. Fourth career game with three touchdown receptions. Just opens up the whole offense for you with a, with a player like him. Second down and eight. Here's Martin. Across the 45. Gain of about five yards, and that'll set up that third and manageable once again for Rutgers. And that's how their system works. They have to get third and manageable. You see uh, Robert Martin, tough runner between the tackles there. They have a good stable of backs. Boy, they really run tough and smart. And that man there, he sends a text to all of his running backs after practice saying, think, we not me. Right. Ninth play of the drive coming up. It's a third and four. Tailback to Laviano's right is good one. Pressure coming. Good one to catch. Makes one spin, but is brought down shy of the first down. That's Demetrius Cooper, the sophomore from Chicago, making the play for the Spartans. That was a nice play by Harris, number 45 from Michigan State, turning that in. Beating the block and turning it in to, to help coming on the inside out by the Michigan State defense. Going for it on fourth. It's a fourth and six. And now a timeout called by Michigan State. And 7.22 to play in the fourth quarter. Fourth and six for Rutgers. When we come back, down by three. TN is brought to you by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. And by the new Pioneer 1000 side by side from Honda. It's real, it's big, it's here. And just a gorgeous look at the Empire State Building, New York City skyline. We're in Piscataway, New Jersey, 722 to play. In the fourth quarter, it's a fourth and six for Norris Wilson and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, and they're going forward one for one on fourth down tonight. There's Leia Aviano back to throw. Underneath, wide open. It's good one. First down and more. Inside the 30, shut down, and around the 27. Justin Goodwin is their third down back. They like to get the ball to. They were just a little flat route. All the receivers going inside, kind of a little rug route. Wide open to the flat. Miscommunication on the outside perimeter, on the perimeter of the Michigan State defense. It's an 18 yard gain, and Goodwin, a guy that Rutgers loves to use on third down, but they're on fourth down. And it's first and 10. On the ground, this is Robert Martin trying the right side. Nice drive here by Rutgers. Laviano makes some key throws on, on this drive. Coach D'Antonio's going, hey, we need to find a way to stop these guys. The last time Rutgers defeated a top five team, 2007. South Florida then was ranked second in the country. Twelfth play of the drive of coming here. And on the D of the left side, here is Martin. Across the 20. Slips free inside the 10. Gain of 16. And Darian Harris just missed the tackle. The star linebacker, the outside linebacker for Michigan State just missed the tackle. Good job by Martin just running through it. Got by Nicholson and then John Reschke. Sam linebacker playing valuable minutes all season long for the injured Ed Davis. And Darren Harris just had, needs to put his head on the outside there instead of on the inside. Jay Lehman knows about that being a linebacker. Keep your head on the outside, you'll make the tackle. It's first and goal for Laviano. And of course, flags. Need a timeout. Called by Rutgers. Charge timeout. Rutgers. They're second. 
So this will be a 30 be second timeout. Just timeout. one timeout remaining. Michigan State has two. 541 to play as Ben McDaniels, first year offensive coordinator, visits with his quarterback and Mark D'Antonio visits with his defense with the captains, Darian Harris. While we have some time, let's check in downstairs and join Jay Lehman. Well, that timeout was just what the doctor ordered for the Michigan State defense. This drive started all the way back on the five, and the Michigan State defensive linemen looked tired. They got their hands on their hips, and for the first time tonight, you really see the offensive line on run plays. Rutgers playing lower, having leverage, and getting great push led to some great run plays. That's a good point. Fatigue is a big factor in fourth quarters of games. Where all those win sprints pay off. Are you, what kind of shape you're in as a football team in the fourth quarter? Right now, Rutgers are having their way with that defense from Michigan State from the five yard line. It's a front four for Michigan State still without Lawrence Thomas. Here's Martin. Just tripped up inside the five. If he keeps his feet, that's a touchdown. It is, and it's a counter scheme again to get angle blocks on the front of the defensive line of Michigan State. And Martin just running through big holes right now. If he keeps his feet, he does score. Martin up to 12 carries, 61 yards. Greg Evans has come in for Michigan State. He's running that front line as they have five on the front line. Here's the handoff. Martin nowhere to go. You see a lot of Michigan State defenders Diving at the ground right now. They're not they're not staying on their feet as Jay Lehman pointed out That's a sign of fatigue Stay on your feet quit diving at players And Rutgers tried another counter play right there that they, that they did stop but they had a chance Third down and goal Carew at the bottom of your screen uh, screen Tailback to Laviano's left is good one. Here's the fade. Carew can't make the play. Incomplete, no flag. Well, that was a back shoulder fade route. Surprised that, that he dropped that ball as strong as he is to the catch. This back shoulder fade. Laviano needs to throw it a little bit shorter. A little bit shorter. He let him a little bit too much. The crew's tied up. Nice job by Colhoun on coverage. This is a 22-yard field goal attempt for Kyle Federico, the senior. He's three of four this season. This to tie the game. And he does. So with 4.21 to go, Rutgers has pulled even with the fourth-ranked team of the country, Michigan State. 24 all. A drive that began at their own five. Capped off by a 22 yard field goal from Federico. 24 all. 9 p.m. Eastern. 16 play, 91 yard scoring drive. Capped off by the game tying field goal from Kyle Federico. Robert Martin on that drive. Eight carries for 43 yards. 24 24. That record all Rutgers offense had Michigan State on their heels. The Michigan State is tired on defense right now. It's Kyle Federico booting it away. And this is RJ Shelton across the 20 yard line. Now you see Quinton Gauze, and he is the subject tonight of the United States Marine Corps leader of the game. Semi-finalist for the 2015 William V. Campbell Trophy. You see the GPA 328 Journalism and Media Studies is his major. And he will earn his degree in January. A co-captain, Clinton Gauze. He's had a special night. Very impressed with their linebacking. All three linebackers lead the team in tackles. Gauze has had a special night. Seven tackles in all for Gauze. So Connor Cook, the senior, as the freshman L.J. Scott to his right. And here is Scott, and he is hit, still fights, but doesn't get much. A gain of a yard. Quanzel Lambert, the junior from Secklerville, New Jersey, made the tackle. 
Here's where your senior all-time winning quarterback in school history takes over. You want him to lead your team at this point in time. On second and nine to the near side, can't find Burbridge. Pressure was coming up the middle, and Cook got hit. It'll be third down. Excellent pressure by Rutgers defense up front. Just a four-man rush. They kind of could throw it earlier than he wanted to. Yep, Mongo Ture in there, number 58 for Rutgers, your pass rushing specialist. Michigan State 8 of 14 on third down tonight. Cook looking deep. Can he hook up with Shelton? He climbs and pulls it down. R.J. Shelton on third and long. These receivers for Michigan State have had a great night. These are contested throws. Good coverage here by Rutgers. Little wheel route to the outside. Nice concentration by Shelton. And Connor Cook puts it in the spot. Perfect spot. Boy, they, they are really having been a great night of catching the football. It's a 29-yard pass and catch. Cook to Shelton on first down. Here's the freshman, Scott. And he's brought down shy of the 40. Gain of about five yards for Scott. Less than Austin on the tackle. Another freshman. As Mark D'Antonio looks on. Second and four, under three to play. 24-24. Trying to eat clock so Rutgers doesn't get the ball back. His Mission State's defense is tired. They, they're having a hard time covering Carew. Trying to eat up a little clock in, in this situation right now. Officially a gain of six. Sets up a second and four. There's the freshman Scott again off the left side. Inside the 40, that'll bring up a third and two. Let's check in once again with Mike Hall back in Chicago. Mike? Corey, we got a final update for you in that TCU game. The upset does not happen. This 55-yard catch from Josh Doxson seals the deal in basically the final minute of the game. TCU survives 52-45. to Hi, Mike. Thanks. They've had a few of those this season, but somehow TCU has found a way. You have to survive on the road in college football. It's basically what it is anymore. It's a third and two. Here's Burbridge. Got the pitch. Stumble. Kept his feet. Has a first down across the 30. My, Gain of 10. My MVPs of this game are the wide receivers. <laughs> they, they have been special tonight. Just a little jet sweep to the outside. This is a pass play because he shovels it forward. Good job of keeping his feet, Burbridge. He was going down. He kept his feet. Got the first down. Big first down for Michigan State. Look for a lot of run right now. Need some more clock. And here is Scott. L.J. Scott across the 25, down near the 20. Well, they're in field goal range. Let's see where they want to put that football. They may want to slide in the middle of the field. I see Michael Geiger warming up. Get the first down first. Rutgers calling his last please, time please out. 69 please. seconds to go. 24-24. Please reset the game clock to 1-11. Here's where that... State's Thank you. Offensive line and running backs are starting to take over on this last drive. Of course, you had the great throw from Cook to Shelton. Time call. There's Jack Allen, one of the co captains. And Allen's been playing some center, some left tackle for this injured, injured, and banged up offensive line. Jack Coughlin, he has not played at all tonight, sideline with a knee injury. And Jack just says, no, just tape me up. I'm, I'm going back in. 
Let's take a look now at our Duluth trading hardest working player, Leonte Carew. <laughs> After missing 25 days, reinstated this week, practicing Thursday, he has made a difference, and that's some tonight. 134 yards receiving, three touchdowns his first game since the loss to Washington State here on September 12th. Just started practice on Thursday. And usually Friday's a walkthrough. <laughs> One day of practice. Look what he's doing tonight. Jack Allen, that tape job, he's still in the game. He will snap it to Cook. Here is Scott. The right side, and he's wrapped up and dropped. That's Quan Lewis, senior from Pleasantville, New Jersey, transfer from South Carolina that made the tackle. Stoppage in play as Michigan State has another player down. And this is Jack Allen again. He tried to stay in there. He's probably still hurting from the previous play. Tried to stay in. He's tough. That was a big question really all week, and now Allen's going to get some help off the field. Who could play, who couldn't? And not putting much weight, none at all, on that right leg. Cody Keeler did start tonight for Michigan State. Normally a right tackle, got some time at left tackle. Brian Allen got moved over to center again as Jack Allen was forced to play some left tackle. Here he's right here. Oh, boy. Right in the back of his left ankle. Two plays in a row, he's banged up. That, I don't want to lose him. He's, he's their leader, they're all American. So David Beadle is now, they keep it on the ground. LJ Scott, can he turn the corner? He does. Scott the 10, the 5, and knocked out inside the 5 yard line. 48 seconds to go, but a first and goal upcoming for Michigan State, a gain of 16. Huge run. Off tackle play. L.J. Scott is a load. Perfect for this time in the game to put, give the ball to L.J. Scott. Just off tackle. It's all him to the outside. That Rutgers defense is all packed in there tight, so it's a perfect play call by offensive coordinator Dave Warner. Rutgers, no timeouts remaining. First and goal, Michigan State. The freshman, L.J. Scott, plowing forward to the goal line. He's in. Touchdown, Michigan State. Connor Cook and the Spartans respond. L.J. Scott, the freshman, did not play at all in the first half. Banged up tonight. Madre London got hurt. Scott came in, and he runs it in for three, and the Spartans are back on top with under a minute to go. Great teams find a way, especially in the fourth quarter. Huge drive sparked by a big-time throw from Connor Cook to R.J. Shelton. And then the running backs did the rest with the offensive line. Primarily L.J. Scott. So now Geiger for the extra point. Michigan State up 31-24 with 43 seconds to go. The only thing here is you would have liked to work the clock a little bit more. Let's take a look now at the Dr. Pepper. Play of the game here tonight. And this will be the touchdown run from L.J. Scott, his second tonight. Reigning Big Ten Freshman of the Week. He's won that honor twice. Tapping off that 10-play, 76-yard drive. And that's the one-of-a-kind Dr. Pepper play of the game, the three-yard run from L.J. Scott. Just a G scheme. We call it a G scheme with a guard pole leading the way. Fullback leading the way. L.J. Scott doing the rest with his powerful leg drive to get in the end zone. Big drive. Michigan State once again had a dig deep on the depth chart. David Beadle came in. Brian Allen moved back around to center on that drive. 
We've got special teams out here now, and the kickoff coverage for Michigan State has not been a staple for them this year. They have struggled in this department. There's a guy that can make things happen quickly. Janarian Grant will see how careful Geiger and the Spartans will be. Rutgers, remember, no timeouts remaining. Down by 7.43 seconds to play. And the kick way off from the get-go. That gives Rutgers great field position with 43 seconds to go and a big-time receiver in Leonte Peru. Free kick out of bounds, kicking team number four. Ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down, Rutgers. Mark D'Antonio and his team penalized, and Maurice Wilson and the Scarlet Knights will begin from their own 35, needs seven. No timeouts and 43 seconds to play for Laviano and company. No timeouts, but first downs are many timeouts. If you get to the first down, the clock will stop. It's like a mini timeout. Got to get ready to go. So you can still throw the ball over the middle as long as it's past the first down marker. Riley Bulla, Chris Fry showing pressure. They drop back, as does Laviano to the near side, and it's bobbled and dropped by Charles Scarf. Tight end for Rutgers. Second and 10 upcoming, 38 seconds to play. Coming up next, the final drive presented by FanDuel. Recap of all the games throughout the Big Ten Network and Big Ten Conference here today. Michigan State just thrown, shown a three-man rush, dropping eight in the coverage. That last time, shown blitz, but they'll probably back out of it. Calhoun pressure applied as Laviano misses over the middle. Once again, trying to set up Scarf. There's some soft spots in that defense right between the numbers and the, and the hash. Not the sideline hash, but the middle hash. Little soft spots that they can hit for first down yardage against this type of prevent defense that, that Michigan State's showing right now. Needs to be a first down throw. You don't want to catch it underneath. Michigan State bringing three over the middle, open and caught. Andre Patton inside the 40, found a soft spot in that zone. It's a 26-yard play. That'll stop the clock temporarily at 27 seconds. Got to hurry and look. Go for the spike. Spike it down. Here we go. You have about four plays left, maybe a fifth. Still time on the clock. Laviano now over 200 yards passing here tonight. On second down and 10, over the middle, tipped in, knocked away, Darian Harris. Trying to get to those soft spot, spots I was talking about. Need to go a little wider. Here it is. Just, just a three-man rush. Dropping the eight, which you have to have really good pinpoint passing against eight man in coverage. As eight, Michigan eight State dropping. taking Carew out of the equation here on this drive. Well, they, they have Carew at the top of the screen, wide to the right. See if they get him on the inside there, past the first down marker. On third and ten, here comes Calhoun, and Laviano sacked. Calhoun from the edge, but that was Malik McDowell who dropped Laviano for a loss and a sack. No timeouts remaining, clock is under ten. Got to hurry now. Throw up to Hail Mary, throw it up, no. And that was fourth down. That was fourth down, he got to throw up to Hail Mary. That was fourth down, and that's the game. So Laviano losing track of downs. That was fourth down, and he spiked it, and that's how this one is going to end. 
They needed a Hail Mary signal on the sideline. That's all they had left because they were going to run out of clock. And there's miscommunication on the sideline. You can read his lips saying clock, clock, clock. Looked up, saw the time, but never saw the down. Yeah, that's Laviano. He's got to look to the sideline for the Hail Mary signal. And it looked like he never did look at the sideline, and, and Coach Wilson's letting him know that. So victory formation for Michigan State. The Spartans will go to 6-0, 2-0 in the conference, and they will take on Michigan next week. There's the knee, and there's the last few seconds here tonight in Piscataway. So Michigan State tested once again, but the Spartans and Mark D'Antonio remain undefeated. They have now won 11 straight Big Ten road games, six straight wins in games decided by seven points or less. Michigan State now 6-0, 2-0 in league play. Rutgers 2-3, 0-2 in the Big Ten Conference. What a great game for Connor Cook, led this football team. And this is a banged up football team with a, a rotating roster and lineup, and Connor Cook led him to victory on a great drive in the fourth quarter. Connor Cook, 357 yards passing, and Michigan State wins. Let's check in now with Jay Lehman, standing by with the victorious head coach, Mark D'Antonio. Coach, a highly competitive game, back and forth. In the end, what was the difference for your team? I just think we kept playing through it, you know. I mean, we didn't have a lot of good things sometimes happening, but we kept playing, and... Uh, I thought we controlled the football. Obviously, a great drive at the, in the fourth quarter. We were able to finally run the ball a little bit more effectively. Talk great, about, great catch by R.J. Shelton, a big play. Big play. Talk about specifically Connor Cook on that last drive. Tell me about his play. You know, big clutch catch down here and just driving us down there, getting us in the right play at the line of scrimmage and things of that nature. So um, just glad to go 6-0. and we got, we got to get better. Speaking of 6-0, and you play a 5-1 and Michigan team next week. How big is that game? Well, that game's always big, you know that. It's a great game, and uh, I think both teams will come to play, but uh, uh, we'll worry about that on Monday. Just want to get on the play and get home. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Ben. All right, Coach, thank you very much, Jay. Thank you as well. Michigan State will head to the locker room, head to the airport, 6-0 on the season. More from Piscataway after this here on BTN.